Hi, I'm Jan Brett, and I'd like to show you how to draw cinders, a chicken cinderella. Together with my husband Joe, our friend Elof Erickson, and our guide Tanya Avanova, we traveled to Novgorod, Russia. I used the very old structures from the Baltic area of Russia as a starting point for my book. Then I found three of my favorite chicken breeds to use as models for the characters in my story. I'd like to introduce them to you and have you follow along while I show you how to draw how to draw cinders a chicken Cinderella. This is the model for Cinders, and her name is Freya, and she is a phoenix, a silver phoenix hen. And this is a kind of chicken that's from uh, Japan, and the female is very much like the uh, red jungle fowl, which is the ancestor of all chickens. Isn't she pretty? Uh -huh. And she's kind of ashy in the back and a little bit salmony in the in the breast. And so I thought she'd make a very good candidate for Cinders, who's kind of um, not very flamboyant looking. So I'm, she lives with all her friends, but right now she's just going to this box while I show you her, the male version of the Silver Phoenix, which is Sasha. And the model for the book actually was his father, Elof, but this is Sasha. <laughs> Hi, big boy. And he is a very handsome boy. So he's a cockerel, which means that he's just turned, she's just about to turn one years old, and then he'll be a rooster when he's the, over the age of one, and you can see his beautiful red comb and wattles, which the female doesn't have. And he's got this tail, and his, um, the ancestors, which is a Japanese chicken, their tails can go to be 25 feet long, so they need special care. But he doesn't really need too much special care. He just lives in a nice big pen with lots of shavings. But he's a very handsome boy and very friendly. And I'm glad to um, have you see him. It was fun to dress him up in his ve purple velvet suit, because of course he's a royal in the book. And then my, one of the most beautiful chickens in the world is this silky chicken. And she is a bantam, a small one, and has this beautiful white, these white feathers, and they don't have any, put your wing in, they don't have any uh, barbs to um, make them smooth so that she can't fly. But she has this little top knot and feathers on her feet, five toes, and then underneath she's got almost black, bluish black skin, very dark eyes, and um, ma amazingly enough, her earlobes are turquoise, if you can see that. So it's a very beautiful chicken and kind of special. You w wonder where they ever came from. and. That's why, why she makes a perfect um, fairy godmother. And she has the kind of personality for a fairy godmother, too. They love to have baby chicks and take care of their babies. Follow along with me while I draw Cinders, the chicken Cinderella. I'm going to use a marker. I usually start out with pencil if I'm drawing in my art studio so that the camera can see it. So I will be going over some of my work, but I want to show you some simple shapes to start off. At the top of your page, I'd like you to draw a small circle. That's going to be the chicken's head. And then a little bit below that, an egg shape. That's going to be her body. And chickens have quite small heads, so don't worry if that's not, if that looks a little bit small to you. And it's not going to stay in the air like that. I'm going to connect it with a cone-like shape. That's going to be her beautiful, long, graceful neck. And then it, this is going to look almost like a, pea, a slice of orange. That's going to be her graceful tail. And that's almost as big as her body. And then the chicken's legs are covered with feathers a little bit down their thigh. And then you'll see her, her leg and her three toes in front. One, two three, and then it almost looks like there's a little place where she rests her foot, and then there's one smaller claw in the back, and she has little toenails on the top of that, and then scales that come down her leg, and she has a kind of a grayish yellow kind of leg. Some chickens have yellow legs, and some chickens even have almost a greenish color leg, and some have gray legs. 
but this kind of chicken does have kind of a yellowy, pinky, gray color. I'll mix it up in a minute. Now her beak's gonna start giving her personality, and I'm just going to start about halfway down, and it curves downward slightly, but then the trick is to have the mouth, the opening, come right into the circle, and then underneath, not quite to the end, that goes, that's the bottom part of her beak, and then her wattle hangs down. And this will get much redder and a little bit bigger when she's starting to lay eggs. So when she's a young chicken, and when she's not laying, that will look a little bit smaller and not as bright red. And then right in the center of her, of her, this circle, you can draw her eye. And the phoenix have a beautiful big eye. And then around the eye, I'm going to pick another little circle just to show that little piece of skin before where the feathers grow. And then uh, her beak will come in and I can kind of make her smiling a little bit. And then right around her face here, it's uh, skin. And it's, it's kind of a pink color. And this is her earlobe down here. And that's kind of a pale um, white color because she lays white eggs. Chickens with white earlobes lay white eggs. Chickens with red earlobes lay uh, brown eggs. So it's a good way to tell. And you'll notice in my book that all the chickens in the hen house have red earlobes and, and they have brown or tinted eggs. But Cinders is the only one with a white earlobe and she lays white eggs. So that kind of adds to the story a little bit. Now her comb does it, oh, her, she got a nostril to breathe. You know, sometimes they open their mouths to breathe, but usually their nostril. And then her comb's gonna start way down here. Like usually you think start up here. No, it starts right down here. And they usually have five little points, but I'm gonna stop right there because she's gonna wear her um, Russian hat like I have on that's called a kokochinik. And it's traditional and they come in different shapes, and they're colored with beautiful velvets and jewels and gold and silver braid and mother of pearl, and you just can't get fancy enough for these beautiful um, ha ceremonial hats. Well, they're, you could wear them to a, a dance. And then I'm gonna fill in her neck area a little bit. So it comes down like this and hitches to the egg shape and she, as I said, she's got a graceful neck. And then she, her feathers right here will, will follow along her back. And then her wing will be right here. I'm just gonna show where her shoulder is. So here's your egg, it's right in the middle. Now I'm gonna have her dressed up. And she's going to be wearing a seraphan, which is a kind of dress that's traditional in, in Russia, especially in the olden days. People still wear them today. And it's like a way of saying pinafore. So it has two straps right here, and then she has a pretty blouse underneath it, and it probably would be embroidered. And then she'll have her wing over it with a very pretty blouse, and then it will come up here, and maybe there, we'll put some buttons on the back. And then her dress will come down underneath and that will cover up her leg, and I'll draw right over that, because I would normally use a pencil, and I would just um, erase this part, because I'd draw the chicken underneath, and then her pretty dress, and then maybe put a little piece right here co covering her tail, and then she's usually have about seven or eight feathers on the tail, and they look like a roof. They, the top one is comes over the one, uh, the one underneath, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So she has seven. And she has a few feathers that kind of fall over the top of it. It's very pretty. So she's, maybe I'll put her other foot in because she looks like she might fall over if I, <laughs> if I don't. And these chickens are quite good flyers. They could fly up into a tree. And then her feathers on her, they're, this is called the hackle feathers. And they start right under the chin, right here, and then they flow down her neck. So now I'm going to put on her beautiful hat, and it's gonna have like a little peaked top, and then a little scallop shape here, a scallop shape here, and then it will come down, and then I'll put a little bow there, or she could have flowers and then some pretty streamers. And I put the streamers on um, my cinders so that when she was in the sleigh, they could fly behind her and it would create a lot of action in the story. So I think it's time for me to color her in. 
Um, I think I'll right now, before I um, go to the color, though, I will add her eyeball. So you can put a lot of expression on your creature that you're drawing by just where you place the eyeball. And I'm just making her look, uh, let's see, we'll make her look a little bit, maybe a little bit concerned about what's going to happen next. She's, after all, she's going to a beautiful ball and doesn't really know what it's going to be like. She's Now she's all dressed up and she's confident, but she's not really sure about what's going to happen next. So she's looking a little bit worried, but happy because she really did want to go. So I've got a little mark right above her eye to show that. And I'm gonna, going to start with um, a little bit of blue and brown mixed together, which will make a, uh, uh, I'll be able to create shadows with this, which I usually do when I start my picture. And it will make her look more three-dimensional, like she has um, a little bit of a uh, shape to her. Whereas if it just, if I didn't do this, she would look more flat. So I can do the pleats on her on her seraphin and then her underskirt. So right underneath where that top part goes, I'll put a little bit of shadow. And then uh, her feet are sh in shadow as well. And so I'll add the pleats. So I'm just making some lines and then I'll just take a little water and kind of smush the area around those lines. And uh, hopefully that will look like pleats. Of course, in my studio, I always say it takes an it takes an hour to do an inch. So it, um, of course I concentrate and really do all this detail, these, this detail with a lot of concentration. So same thing on her tail. Now she is mostly gray. I work on, right around her eye a little bit because you know that's where her expression really is in her eyes. And I don't want this to be too dark. So right around her eye, I can accentuate, accentuate and her beak and her waddle. I'm not going to do anything to because it's bright red. And then I'll outline her earlobe, which is that kind of creamy white and a little bow there. We, we'll put a bright color in there. Oh, it's a great way to introduce a pretty color so that you can choose what color you would like on your particular chicken. You know, I realized I forgot to put the tip of her wing, which will go right in here. And she's got all those feathers are folded, so you don't really see them. But that's where her wing is in her pretty, in her pretty uh, blouse <laughs> with, with the embroidery on it. And let's see, I, I think I need to get some red. I'm using a bright red and then mixing it with a little bit of a darker red. And there's her comb. And then her waddle is what this is called, smaller on the female. And then the area around her eye is a little bit more of a pink color. Not quite as red. And then she's mostly gray, whitish gray on the top of her head. Because I wanted to choose a breed that would be a little bit drab, but would, was also beautiful. So of course when she's kind of the being bossed around and not allowed to have food and stuff, she doesn't look as pretty as later on when the fairy godmother uses her wand and shows her how beautiful she can really be. So that we've got the silver gray color that we saw when we looked at a close up of the real cinders. Actually I have three phoenix hens right now. Gudrun, um, Freya, who's here, and Eddie, whose real name is Edwina. And also her neck. Actually, I'm going to make a little bit of a darker gray because those hackle feathers are white, but then they have a little black stripe in the each one. And I, when I was first introducing you to this kind of chicken, the silver phoenix, I said it looked like the the wild jungle fowl that you see in India. We've actually seen that bird. And um, this coloring is very similar. And when it's in, this, in the forest, you really don't see them. They blend in very beautifully. And of course, when she's on her eggs, she doesn't want any predators to see her because she's protecting them. And then right in the front, it's kind of a salmon-y 
brownish gray color. I've got my marker back and I'm going to put a little border on the top bottom of her skirt, which can be gold embroidery, and then also a little gold border on the, her jacket, and then maybe the top part here where the straps come down and it forms a little bodice across here. I'll make that also have a little border of gold, which I'm just mixing yellow and a little bit of brown and maybe a little touch of green in there, which will make it, a, you know, a very lavish looking dress. And it would, it, I, the best part for me is spending hours trying to uh, do all the details on the, on the borders of the clothes so that they look like the ones that I saw at the museum in St. Petersburg. And so here's the border on her top, the top part of her dress, which is like a, almost like a little jacket, and then the straps that come down on her, it's her seraphim, seraphim, and some buttons in the back. Oh, and then of course her, uh, her uh, hat is going to have gold on it because that, and these come in all different shapes. You could do almost a, s a complete circle, and they have lots of jewels and colors if you want. And then the beautiful uh, ribbons that will come down that I'll do in a minute. And red is a color that's very loved. So I'm going to first, I'm just going to start working on the little sleeves of her dress. I'm creating a shadow there because this would be like white linen fabric. And then the border might have some, some beautiful colors on it. But uh, red is used a lot. And so you could put a little indication of some embroidery. And I was happy to see that a lot of the embroidery involved beautiful birds, including peacocks and chickens and geese, which was, which was really fun to draw, and flowers. So there's her, the sleeve of her garment. And you know, once she uh, marries the Prince Cockerel, then she's royal. So I don't know if you know this, but purple is the color of royalty. So I'm going to use my purple and make her the top part of her dress, the little jackety part. And I'll make that a lovely purple violet shade. And she'll be able to wear that for the rest of her life. And it looks really pretty with that red, I think. And if you're drawing this picture, at home or at school, maybe you could get some sparkles and some metallic markers to work on, on your uh, clothes because that would make it really look authentic, which I'm not going to do here, but I'm just a suggestion to you. And then what color would look nice with that purple? I'm thinking maybe um, I have a rose color here, which maybe I will use that, and then I'll add some design elements to it. So this is a lot of area right here. So I'm just going to go over it very quickly. And then maybe I can add some detail on top of it. Because you wouldn't you normally see just one, a plain fabric. It would be one color. It would always it would be a, called a brocade, where there would be a design woven into it. Or it could be embroidered. And then the cotton ones, the ones for every day, have, uh, are printed and they're very beautiful. There's whole books just devoted to this <laughs> cotton fabric, Russian cotton fabric that is printed with all kinds of designs and beautiful colors. And that would be more for every day. So now she's starting to take shape and st I'm st being able to cover up the underneath showing her body. And I'm just starting to notice that I forgot to do her feathers that cover her tail area right here. Tail coverts, they're called. And then this little area here is very fluffy. It's called the fluff area. <laughs> That's what they call it. And then what would, be, what would be a pretty color for her ribbons? I think maybe a turquoise color would be, 
would be nice because one thing about these Russian um, traditional clothes is they are very colorful and beautiful. There's nobody wants to uh, show up in something drab and dreary. And it's a little bow right there. And maybe she has turquoise <laughs> for her jewels and her uh, Kokoshinek, Koko which is the name of the hat. I may not be pronouncing that correctly, but um, I, I tried. <laughs> So now I'm mixing a little bit of a dark red. I'm just about through with her. I'm just gonna pull a few little design elements. Got a little bit too dark there. And um, make, maybe make some um, almost like paisley shapes along the bottom. And then if I had um, hours and hours, I could fill that in with some different colors to give it some sort of depth. But this is uh, giving her the look of what a well-dressed <laughs> Russian princess might be wearing. It's a far cry from her rags that she started out with. There, and then we'll put some embroidery here. Maybe indicate, maybe that's where that'd be some little hens marching along, which I actually saw at the museum. And she's just about done. I think I could probably add a little bit of maybe blue down in her skirt area. And you can have a lot of fun making up what these fabrics would look like. Awfully pretty. And there, I think Cinders is done. Now, an, ar an artist always should sign their work. So I've got my pen back out. So it's my name, Jan Brett. And I hope that you enjoy drawing your chicken as much as I've enjoyed drawing Cinders.